head coach Chrissy Strimple. So we get it underway with Talon Edwards leading it off for OSU. And that one's in for a strike, and we are underway in this, the 58th meeting, with OSU leading 35-22. Rick Boyer is the home plate umpire. Terry Holt at first, and Trey Collins is down the third baseline. And two strikes. One was a high strike, and that was an outside corner strike. And Mara Moore gets both of those from the home plate umpire, Rick Boyer. In the contest against USF on Friday night, Mara had some issues control-wise early on. Walk three in the first inning against USF, and unfortunately for her and the Golden Hurricane, it resulted in two runs for the Bulls, and they went on to a 3-0 victory. That one hit well, but a nice jump on the ball by Haley Morgan. Yeah, with this wind here today, Bruce, it's going to carry once these balls get in the air. So that was a really good jump, like you said, by Haley Morgan to be ready to go. She was able to easily field that one and one easy out for more and more. Claire Tim, who is the young lady who we highlighted in our pregame show. She steps to the plate now, has a glittering average of 412. That's good for second on the team. Another sophomore taking the plate early in this batting lineup for Oklahoma State. Young team, but good. Mara Moore blows the fastball by her. 74 degrees here in Tulsa. And sunshine, but that wind, unlike this past weekend where it was primarily blowing in, this the wind today is blowing out toward left center. That one's in for a strike as she gets the edge call. And it's 0-2, but you look at that wind, and that's the prevailing wind. The wind normally here we see out of the south, and it is blowing up to, what, 20 miles an hour at this point. Yeah, and this <laughs> Oklahoma State team doesn't need any more help when it comes to slugging percentage first. And the count stays at 0-2. We mentioned Tim's average, 4-12. She has four doubles, two triples, four home runs, and 12 knocked in. 16 home runs on the season. No, oh, it's more than that for Oklahoma State. As you mentioned, they, they do get the ball out of the ballpark. Late swing and a foul, but she stays alive. Yeah, one thing about Tim, she, she's one of three different players in this you know, lineup today, Bruce, with double-digit strikeouts. You saw her get behind in this count early. She's doing a good job of staying alive, getting a piece of these pitches for more. Yeah, the number is 38, actually. 38 home runs led by Wong, who has seven for the Cowgirls. A little bit low in that pitch. Mara Moore, a 5'8 junior from Valley Springs, Arkansas, had a no-hitter earlier this year against Memphis in the American Athletic Conference opener. Just a bit outside. And it's two and two. Mara gets it 59 to, to 62 to 63 is where she lives. So it's not, you know, blowing a lot of folks away, although her rise ball will get some outs, will get some strikeouts, but it's pitch to contact and then get some occasional strikeouts. And that one misses on 3-2, and that is ball four. I, th I think, you know, we had it at two and two on the scoreboard, and that's what I thought the count was. <laughs> The young lady, Claire Tim, thought it was ball four, and now she's <laughs> yanked backward by the home plate umpire. Look at that. Close call, clearly outside, <laughs> and she just starts trotting to first base, and <laughs> look at Mara. <laughs> hey, she, she did it with confidence, you know? Make it until you make it, right? That's right. So now it's three and two. Here we go. Late swing, and we'll do it again at three balls and two strikes. <laughs> hey, the, 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 it's important that the umpire doesn't forget the count. Now, the players, they can mess that up a little bit, but make sure the ump has it right, and he did. By the look on Mora's face, she knew it was still 3-2 at that point. She was like, where are you going? Another full count pitch here. Tap to third, but foul. A good job by Tim to work her way back into this, you know, behind 0-2, works a full count. She actually has three walks on the season, so for her to use the plate discipline that she has in this at bat, it's been really good to see her get back in it. 
And she goes after the drop ball. And that is a pitch that Mara Moore has really established as a possible strikeout pitch. And you know, look at that thing drop down off the table, huh? Yeah, there you see it right there. It looks like it's coming in about, you know, knee level, and then it just falls right out. Gets her swinging. That is her changeup. The changeup is a drop ball. And she gets her first strikeout. Godwin the batter. And that's in there for a strike. Carly Godwin, 360 hitter on the air. Six home runs, 24 RBI. She also has seven doubles in the game. Both of these teams hit the gaps with doubles. Godwin, just a freshman. So we've got more on sophomore, sophomore freshman so far, Bruce. And you wouldn't know it looking at the approach and looking at the numbers, huh? Absolutely. And especially with Godwin, Coach Gassi said she's one of the best hitters he's ever been around, and he's been around some pretty good ones. Absolutely. Just a tad inside, two and one. Godwin is from Lake Waccamaw, North Carolina. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> I've never heard of Lake Waccamaw, but we know Godwin does. She knows where it is. <laughs> That one off the plate, and the count is three balls and one strike. Wong is on deck for Oklahoma State. That bounced back to the mound and gathered in by Moore, and that's an easy one, two, three inning for Mara Moore. As OSU has turned aside, we go to the bottom half of the first. Head coach Chrissy Strimple, and here's Katie Coots. Coots, right-hander, youngster, 3-0 record, and you see a 2.67 earned run average, but this is only her fifth start this year, his, her seventh overall appearance, and she gets ready to face Mackenzie Denson. That's in for a strike. Yeah, versus the ninth-ranked fielding percentage team in the country. You talk about a good defense. For a group that has a lot of new faces, a group that hasn't played much together, that is really impressive for how well they're working together early through this 2024 season. No question. And Tulsa's not that far behind. Slashed foul, and it's one and two now. Mackenzie Denson had a heck of a series against USF. She was five of ten. She had two RBIs. She also went one for three earlier in the week in the win over Iowa State. So she had a good week at six for 13. And now looking to build off of that. You saw her overall average at 449. Poked foul. Let's go with some keys to the game now. And first of all, for Oklahoma State, and Coach Gajewski said, hey, get away, uh, get, get ahead, I should say. No walks and stay with the offensive plan. And what that means is, hey, pitchers, don't walk anybody and do what we do offensively. And then on the Tulsa side, cash in on opportunities. And as Coach Strimple said, play us. And we'll expand on that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think for Oklahoma State, it was interesting to me that both coaches said, hey, just play our game. Kajewski told us we need to play the cowgirl way. What that means is, you know, play within ourselves. We know what we're capable of on both offense and defense. Don't try to do too much or do too little, you know, based on the fact that they are ranked six right now, Bruce. A good short hop by Edwards, and Denson is retired. One down here in the first inning. And for Tulsa, playing us means, you know, doing the things that have been successful because this is a gap-to-gap -gap team offensively. They have a little bit of power, but, boy, they run, and they run well. And, they, you, you know, you look at some of the numbers. You have three players that have ten steals for Tulsa, and Denson has seven. So this is a team, if they get, a, if they get on base, they're going to run. The change up just a little bit low. Denson has been so good for Tulsa since coming over from Minnesota. I remember last year, Haley Morgan was the leadoff batter. It's nice for her to be able to play in that two spot, have someone like Denson to really lead things off for Tulsa. Yeah, last year it was the other way around with Haley Morgan leading off and Denson batting second. This seems to have worked. Denson earlier this year was even in the three hole and Coach Strimple went to her and said, hey, I'm thinking this. <laughs> and uh, Mackenzie was like, I'm okay with being leadoff. 
I'm okay with leading the team in batting average. Yes. <laughs> and there's Morgan taking a strike, and Haley's been that career program young lady, 315 average, which actually is one of her lowest averages so far, but you know it's going to go up this year. She has always hit for Tulsa. That ball hit high and fairly shallow to left. Graf has no trouble with it. Two down. Wind didn't seem to be blowing on that one, Bruce. No, wind was not <laughs> going to help up. that one. Yeah. Up and down. Imani Edwards, the batter. And, you know, you talk about Oklahoma State being young. Well, Tulsa, you don't want to say they're old, but they are experienced. You know, they have some players, Morgan, Edwards, Skaggs, Jones, have been around. And in the era of the transfer portal, Bruce, these are also players that have been around and that have been here. And that's a nice one-hop play by Godwin. Godwin, who has played some other positions in the infield, shows why she's got that range. A nice backhand play. More and more in terms of records being broken, attendance records being broken for people trying to watch this game in this state. And today's just another example of that, Bruce. Mm -hmm. Here's uh, Carolyn Wong. Caroline Wong, a 1-1 count. Bounce toward shortstop. Edwards cleanly, one down. So that's four up, four down for Oklahoma State. A great start for Mara Moore of the Golden Hurricane. You have to think, we're watching two teams who are both in the top 40 in the country in runs earned. And so far, it's been the defenses and the pitching that has dominated early. Rosie Davis, the batter. Davis. Leading hitter on the team, average-wise, 417. And again, for Rosie, it just belies the fact that she's a, a five-foot-five freshman out of Readyville, Tennessee. It can't be understated what Coach Gajewski's been able to do in terms of the fact that they have a 24 and three record, mm -hmm. and he has an entirely new look team. He has new coaches on his staff that he's working with. There's a lot of youth on this team, also on this staff, and yet they're still having a great season. Haven't skipped a beat, Bruce. And that one evidently up. 3-0 uh, count. <laughs> you saw the, the catcher, Emma Vickery, turn around and go, where was that? <laughs> and evidently it was up. So it is 3-0 now to Rosie Davis. And that one's right straight down the middle. And it's three and one. Still a hitter's count, obviously. No score in the game. We're in the second. And that's ball four. First base runner of the ball game is a walk to Rosie Davis here in the second inning. Michaela Ork is the batter, the DP. No surprise there from Rosie Davis. She has more walks and strikeouts on the season. Really good plate discipline. Again, really impressive because she is just a freshman. Yeah, ninth walk of the year. On base percentage over 480. One ball, no strikes to Bork. 286 average, four doubles, five home runs, and 14 RBIs. A 286 is probably a little misleading for where she's at at this point in the season. She was off to a slow start. It's taken a little while for her to get going, but she's she's been doing really well as of late. Runner aboard has a couple of steals on the year and three trips. And almost looked like she wanted to go on that one, but she held up and the pitch is inside two and one. Work is out of Frisco, Texas. Transfer from Kansas. And she is going now. Here's the throw. Out on a good throw by Vickery. And the coverage by Imani Edwards. So Davis gets cut down. The play goes 2-6, two, 2 down, and nobody aboard. And Bruce, running was what we talked about in coming into this game, going to be really important for because both teams like to run. 
It was a really good job there by Vickery. Heads up play, great throw, and a good finish there on the other end of it by Imani Edwards. Boy, it had to be a perfect throw. Otherwise, that foot gets in there. 2-2 mm -hmm. two -two count to Wark. And a tapper back to the mound. And she has faced the minimum so far, Mara Moore. And we'll head to the bottom half of. Picked a big finish first and second are currently one and two in the country. So you talk about a loaded conference. Yep. You look no further than the Big 12. <laughs> one ball, no strikes to Clara Skaggs. Clara the juniors having a good year, 282, uh, 382 average. 10 doubles, a triple, a home run, and 20 RBIs. And the count goes to one and one to Clara. And the one home run is probably the most surprising thing because she has tremendous power. She certainly has the ability to lead a team in home runs. And that power can go both ways, too. She can pull one out, and she can hit one the other way out of the ballpark. But she can't catch up to that one, and the count goes to one ball and two strikes. Yeah, she also comes from... A family of Oklahoma, or excuse me, of baseball and softball players. Dad played baseball at UCO. Uncle played actually at Oklahoma State. That's lined on the left field line, just inside the thir uh, third base left field line, and that's a two-bagger for Skaggs. And it is the first base hit of the game. Tulsa has a runner aboard at second with nobody out here in the second inning, and Abby Jones the batter. What a great job of hitting here. I mean, talk about pinpoint precision. It might have been a little bit of help from the wind, but that ball stayed right inside the third baseline. You'll see a good look at it here. Bounced right inside of it, and you were just talking about her power. Showed off her ability to not only hit for power, but also hit down the line first. Well, she can hit it the other way a long ways, and when she's doing that, then stuff inside she's able to clean out and those power numbers get even better. Abby Jones very good with the bat so we could see her bunt in this situation or yank one to the right side of the infield. Jones hitting 360 on the year. Oh boy. Abby didn't like that call and when you give the pitcher the river as they talk about in softball it makes it tough on hitters. That was right on the outside edge. And it's one and one to Jones. And took a ball. Two and one. Obviously getting the attention of Godwin at first and Edwards at third. Tulsa will try to get Clara Skaggs to third base here in this at bat. That's in for a strike. First, one of the keys coming into this, right, was cash in opportunities from Chrissy Strimple. This is a prime example of having a runner in scoring position, no out so far. She wants to see them cash in on opportunities like this. 2-2 two -two pitch is hit high and fairly shallow to left. Graf able to capture it and Skaggs cannot advance one down here in the second inning and she said it especially with respect to you know that signature win they're still looking for a couple of games against Texas A&M they lost 8-5 and had some opportunities Texas Tech they lost 3-2 and had again those opportunities to get runs in key moments and just didn't just didn't get it done yeah I mean if you look at recent play they've won seven of their last eight but it was some of those tests early in the season that's a line shot, but good catch by Graf. That ball was hit on the nose by Bearpaw, two down. Graf having a busy afternoon so far, has been responsible for a number of these outs. Third fly ball for her. Yeah. And if that gets in the gap, that's a big time play for Tulsa. But Katie Coots able to get through it. It's a, Go. good, it's a good point, Bruce. Katie Coots, lowest innings pitch total of this pitching staff. Gajewski told us it was important for her to get just some innings under her belt, to yeah. get some experience. She is a freshman. She needs to be put in more situations and felt like this was a really good opportunity to, for her to face a good lineup and still be able to get some experience. Goes 62 to 66, occasionally a little bit more than that. And there's another one hit to the left side and another catch made by Graf. And that does it for Tulsa. Lead off double time. OSU leading the series 35 to 22. 
Audrey Schneidmiller, the batter, to lead it off for Oklahoma State in the third inning. And that one misses inside. Schneidmiller, the number seven hitter, followed by Bloodworth and Grab. Here in the Oklahoma State third inning. No score in this one, only one base hit, only two base runners. Jammed her and fouled it away to the right side. Mara Moore usually locates the ball very well. You know, she played very little of that travel ball because she was playing basketball. And in fact, when she went to junior college, she was thinking, I'm going to play basketball. And eventually she focused on softball only. And that made her a much better pitcher. Once she just focused on, on throwing pitches, she became really good. Well, you've seen the growth just between last season and this season. She was a great pitcher for Tulsa last year, but she's gotten... So much better, I think, mostly in what you just talked about, locating her pitches. Speed hasn't really increased season over season, but her, you know, her strikeout numbers are up at this point comparatively from last season, and she just there's a confidence about her this year. The two one, that one foul, and now two balls and two strikes. Well, Coach Strimple said that Mara Moore embodies the ace mentality with her work ethic and. She, there are times that, you know, she's kind of looking out to the dugout area from her office, like, who is that out there? And it's usually Mara Moore. And it's almost like she has to go out to the bullpen and drag her off the field. <laughs> that one's going to be a tough play. It's an infield hit. <laughs> Schneidmiller has the first base hit of the game for OSU. That's a good single for Schneidmiller. You think about the fact she's only playing in her 16th game, not a everyday starter for this OSU team, playing within herself like Coach Gajewski told us that he wants his players to do, just doing what she can. Really good leadoff single there for her. Bun attempt is popped up, and it is caught by Skaggs. Well, Skaggs was all over that. She was sprinting towards home plate as soon as she saw that bat come flat. That was an incredibly athletic play. As soon as she saw that, she was on it. A little bit too much air under that bunt from Bloodworth, and Skaggs able to make good on that. Number nine hitter Macy Graff steps to the plate. Graff batting at 231 on the year. Certainly a big out for Mara Moore. Especially because it kept the base runner at first. Mm -hmm. Didn't allow her to advance. And, of course, you have that... Heavy laden upper part of the order for OSU coming up. When you want to take care of business in the bottom third, if you're Mara Moore. One ball, one strike. Graf having a good day on defense. See if she can translate that to her offense at the plate as well. From Alito, Texas, transfer from Mississippi State. Playable for Edwards. Two down. She did a good job looking straight into the sun on that fly ball. Didn't seem to bother her at all, even though <laughs> not wearing any sort of sunglasses or help. Hey, nothing bothers Imani. I That's mean, she, her, the, her facial expression, she could hit a grand slam and it'll look just like what you just saw. <laughs> Here's Edwards, the batter, top of the order, and takes a strike. Edwards... Lined one that was caught by Haley Morgan to start things in this game in the top half of the first inning. And Talon now looking to make a difference here in the third. 354 average coming in with Pop. Six extra base hits plus four homers. So a total of 10. Another good thing about her this year, after a stellar first year, her strikeouts are down. She's doing what you were talking about, hitting for power, but She's also better in terms of her plate discipline when she's not hitting for power. That one just a little bit up. Two balls and one strike. Edwards last year played third base and did a nice job there. This year she moves to the outfield. A little bit of an off-speed pitch, and oh, Mara Moore wanted that one. Did you see? I mean, she doesn't 
react a whole lot very often, but you could tell she wanted that one. Mm. Talk about Imani Edwards' stoic face, more and more, a little more expressive. Yes, a little <laughs> more emotional. That ball hit well to center field, but playable. And Morgan is there. And Mara Moore pitches out of trouble. The Golden Hurricane will come. Skaggs in the second. And now with the changeup facing Macy Cole. Macy on the year is at 309. And again, like many of these Tulsa players, five doubles, two triples, two home runs, some good power numbers, good gap numbers for Macy Cole. You look at their batting average as a whole. I mean, Bruce, there are all but two players in this lineup who are hitting over 300 on the season. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard to do as a unit, as a team. They're that batting average ranks 15 in the country. I mean, they're up against a team that's 19th in the country, so these teams both, batting average-wise, are, are good at getting on getting on base. Man. Getting on base and getting on base with a hit. Yeah. That one just outside, and the count goes to two and two. And we, we talked about how good OSU is overall batting average, and, and it is good. But the Hurricane, not far behind. As you mentioned, the good batting average, 337 coming into today as a team. And that's a high, hard one, and she couldn't catch up to it. Cole strikes out, one down in the third inning for Tulsa in this scoreless game. Next up, number 15, Emma Vickery. Emma Vickery, the batter. A good first strikeout there for Katie Coots. Like as he said, his words were, you know, she just needs some work. Her makeup is good, but she's got to just get experience. I mean, she's a young kid and obviously has a really solid pitching staff to learn from, but it's got to feel good to get your first K of the game. And she can get it up to 67 to 69 when she really humps it up. And that rise ball obviously is trouble for any hitter. One and one now to victory. She was highly recruited. She was the number six recruit in the nation by Softball America, number 13 national recruit by extra inning softball. So there's no question they got a gem in Katie Coots. She's from McLean, Virginia. Speed pitches outside. We were talking with Coach Gajewski about that off speed. Okay, so she's getting up to 66, 67. The off speed pitch is about 50 to 52, and you could tell the big difference between those two. Yeah, I mean, it's really easy to see when you have a, what is that, 16 mile an hour difference? Yep. When the ball's coming in. And then you come back with the fast one, and obviously, Vickery changing the eye level a little bit and behind it, but yeah. stays alive. Yeah, she just couldn't get her wrists around quickly enough. But a good job for Coots to kind of change up the pitches and keep the batter guessing. Another 2-2 pitch coming for Emma Vickery. And that one the off speed but high. And now it's 3-2. and two. And if Chrissy Strimple can get that number nine hitter aboard, set the table for Mackenzie Denson on deck. One out and nobody on for Tulsa. Scoreless here in the third. Playable for the second baseman, Davis. Two down. Game, by the way. And here's McKenzie. And McKenzie ready to get things going here for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. And, and if you know Rafael, and we've seen him at games, he's like, he's all Tulsa right now. He's <laughs> wearing all the Tulsa gear. So I don't know if he's got some you split <laughs> loyalties here today or not? You know, with her playing her her high school ball in, in Texas and then going to Minnesota right out of high school, you have to wonder if he ever thought his daughter would come back to play in the state that he grew up playing sports in, yeah. but not going to his alma mater, going to the school down the road. <laughs> <laughs> well, blood is thicker than water, so I bet, you know, he's all in on, on the McKenzie here getting something going with two outs for the Golden Hurricane here in the bottom of the third inning. 
You're saying you think he's wearing blue instead of orange today. Yes. <laughs> Probably. 2-1 pitch. That one tapped to shortstop, but right there is Bloodworth, and that's it for Tulsa. A worry-free inning for Katie Coots here in the third. Tulsa goes 1-2-3, and to getting into that championship series. They finished with a final national ranking of six or better in last four of five years. And then I'm sure every Cowgirl fan will remember 2022 when he brought Oklahoma State their first ever conference title in the Big 12. And of course, it was a win over their biggest rival, Oklahoma. So yep. he is doing quite the job there in Stillwater. 19 All-Americans under his watch. Leading it off is Claire Tim, the number two hitter. So it's two, three, and four facing Mara Moore. Claire Tim struck out swinging her first time up. It's the only strikeout so far for Mara Moore. Each team with one base hit, neither team with a run. And that one rolled in there. That was a bowling ball shot, and it is now two and one. Yeah, it looked like she just lost the grip on it right out of her hand. Left it a little early, didn't she? <laughs> Claire Tim, Gajewski described as just a, a lean kid. She's continuing to gain weight, add power. She's got a pretty swing, and there it is. That is deep to left center field, but again, tracking it is Morgan. And if there's any ball, and it's really all of the outfielders, but certainly the two center fielders in this game, if there's any ball that's got a little hump on it, it's going to be tracked down by either Haley Morgan or Claire Tim, the other center fielder in this game. And it's Carly Godwin. Godwin bounced back to the mound her first time up. That one blooped towards center, but Abby Jones able to get to it. Two down. Yeah, that one was probably a harder play to make than Abby Jones just made it look like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she got a weird piece of that ball, but Jones was quick off the jump and was able to get to it. Yeah, kind of off the handle. Mm -hmm. And with two down, it's Caroline Wong. That one nubbed to the right side and a little bit of an in-between hop there for Abby Jones, but she makes the play. A 4-0 record and making her 12th overall appearance. She has started nine games and now in relief after three innings. Good work by Katie Coots. Now it's Haley Morgan to lead it off against the right-hander. Burns that first one in there. Kyra very strong, 68 to 70. And you could tell that she had a couple more miles an hour on that fastball than what we saw from Coots. And Coots throws pretty hard. Kyra wearing the sunglasses. That would be me out there, Bruce, with yeah. something to help play in this really bright Oklahoma sun. And that sun is setting, as you may be able to see by the shadows, that sun is setting toward, you know, left field, or I should say the left side of this stadium. And it's Edwards. No problem with that play. And Morgan is out. One down here in the fourth inning, and it's Imani Edwards. But that sun will set to the left, and sometimes it gives especially the right fielder, the second baseman, sometimes the first baseman, a little bit of trouble. Here's Imani Edwards, who bounced out to first base her first time. I've actually hit it pretty hard, and Godwin made a good backhand play. And that ball hit hard, and that's a base hit toward the gap. Edwards looking for two. Now she'll look for three as the ball eludes Tim. It is a stand-up triple for Imani Edwards. And the Hurricane has their first base runner in scoring position at third base. Well, Imani Edwards' first pitch drives that ball in the perfect gap between second base, gets past the center fielder, Tim. Tim does what she can, but Imani Edwards rightfully so pumped up after that. At third base with one down, it's Clara Skaggs now. Infield is in now for Oklahoma State. One ball, no strikes to Clara. Back in the second inning, Skaggs laced that double down the left field line. Hurricane fans would love to see her do that again. Yeah, that would be some timely hitting if she were able to produce anything of the same sort here in the bottom of the fourth. Well, we're talking about those keys and cash in on your opportunities was the key. Mm -hmm. And Coach Strimple wants her team to cash in on this opportunity. Late swing and 
<laughs> on deck, Abby Jones had to jump out of the way. <laughs> and it's one and two. You know, Bruce, so far this game is reminiscent of this exact game one year ago. Yes. Played here in Tulsa. We were scoreless until the top of the sixth, and that's what we've got so far. A pitcher's duel. And that, that game ended up going into extra innings 1-1, right? It certainly did, and it took until Rachel Becker came to the plate in the top of the ninth with a two-run homer to seal that one on the road for the Cowgirls. But Kyra Acock also pitched in that game and took everything from her and actually Lexi Kilfoyle in that one to get the win. So now it's two and two to Skaggs. And again, the infield is in. One out, runner at third for Tulsa. The most severe threat so far today. Just barely stayed alive. As the softball players like to say, got rid of that good pitch. <laughs> when, you, when you fouled it off, that gives you another chance. And again, Clara very much crowding the plate. I mean, her toes are on that line, that batter's box line. It's currently... That's another line drive down the left field line, but just foul. The diving effort by Graf. She almost made a spectacular foul ball catch, which would have been interesting if she makes that catch, then Imani Edwards probably tags and scores. Yeah, she does. So we'll call it a, a purposeful drop yeah. there by mm -hmm. the left fielder, but mm -hmm. that was almost identical to her second inning double. Yep. Except this one was a couple inches to the left and wasn't able to capitalize. Another 2-2. That's lined that to left center field, and it's a base hit, and that goes to the wall. Edwards scores into second base as Skagg slides in with a double. Tulsa leads 1-0 over number six, OSU. Skaggs two for two, and an RBI double here in the fourth inning with one out. That was a no doubter, Bruce. And it almost looked like maybe Rosie Davis wasn't expecting Claire to keep running because positioning wise, she was a little bit off the plate and Clara was no doubter going in, had a really great slide and then was able to not only, not only take the uh, RBI lead <laughs> on the team, she's, she was in a three-way tie with 20 RBIs from three players. She's now at 21 and she, she's in at second base safely. And Tara Hall is in as a pinch runner with one out. And Abby Jones is the batter for Tulsa. And again, a very nice job by Clara Skaggs. Took an outside pitch and drilled it into the gap. One ball, no strikes. So Tulsa strikes first. It comes in the bottom of the fourth inning. Jones flied to left in the second. Fouled off in the count, one and one. Abby Jones had a chance to come back for yet another year, her fifth, and she simply didn't want last year to be her last year. Fouled away. And it's interesting, two years ago, she had a 301 average. Last year, 164. And so now she's back to, you know, kind of what we saw in 2022. And coming into this game with a 360 average, so obviously made the right choice and really wanted to play one more year for the Golden Hurricane. That one to the right side will move the runner, but the play is made by Davis. Two down, and Hall is at third base. Kaylin Bearpaw, the batter, and she hit the ball hard her last time. Yeah, Kaylin Bearpaw has never lacked for power. She's had some really good games throughout this season and has a chance to add to her stats. And a big with home a run. Hit a big home run on Sunday. Helped break a game open against USF. And went four for 12 against uh, USF in the series. Five for 14 on the week. Three runs batted in and a home run. Tulsa gets one here in the fourth. Took a little off of that one. And the count is one ball and one strike. AK 
Peacock misses on that one. You talk about local ties to Tulsa, Bruce. Tara Hall on third from Jinx, Oklahoma. Kalen Bearpaw at the plate from Sepulpa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. They're playing in their hometown with a chance to take on number, six. number 16 yeah. in the country. Yeah. <laughs> now two and two to Kalen Bearpaw. Kyra Acock burning that one in there. Two balls, two strikes. And she gets her. So that's it for Tulsa. Three Schneidmiller for Oklahoma State against Mara Moore. And a 1 0 count to Rosie Davis, who walked in the second inning. Now, Tulsa is ninth in the NCAA in doubles and leads the NCAA in triples. And they got a double and a triple to score a run in the home half of the third inning. Home half of the fourth inning, I should say. The pitch in there for a strike, and Davis has a count of one and one. You know, Coach Gajewski told us they're coming here to win. Oh, so yeah. the fact that, you know, they're trailing, obviously there's, I'm sure, no concern. And for Oklahoma State specifically, they've done a really good job of scoring late in games. Didn't have any problems without it, but against UCF in their last Big 12 series. But had to do that against Baylor in their first Big 12 series. So I'm sure that they don't feel any pressure or they're fine because they know they can score, especially late in games. But they don't want to lose this one, especially in state. And sure. especially when you're ranked inside the top 10. 2-2. Two -two. A bit high now, three balls and two strikes. And their ace is Lexi Kilfoyle, and she has started, what, nine games, or eight games, I should say, and 16 overall appearances. She could pitch today, but I think Coach Kenny Gajewski does not want to use her. Spilled foul, and it's still three balls and two strikes. In fact, the next likely pitcher for OSU is Ivy Rosenberry, who also has had a very good year. Leads the Big 12 in ERA. Mm -hmm. Only one loss on the season. Ivy's been elite so far. Pitched less than Lexi, but has been quite efficient. Popped up right side. And Jones takes care of it for Tulsa. One down in the fifth inning. Michaela Wark, the batter. Michaela bounced back to the pitcher Mara Moore in the second inning. Mara Moore did pitch well last year against Oklahoma State. Got Tulsa into extra innings tied at one. OSU ended up winning the game. That one toward left field, and is that a catch? No, it's hopped in. It's a trap for Mackenzie Denson, and Mackenzie appears to be shaken up. It looked awfully close. We'll get another look at it here. She gets her glove. Oh, she doesn't get it underneath it nope. in enough time. Clearly bounced in. Kenzie has had some back issues in her career. And, uh, you know, they, they call her wheels, and, boy, she can get around. There was a play, the... Second game against USF where she singled, she stole second, she stole third, and when the throw at third got away, she scored. So she manufactured a run for Tulsa in that USF game and kind of got Tulsa going. Well, we know where her speed comes from, Bruce. Mm -hmm. Yes. Her speedy father. Yep. He set, what, a new record? A new state record? And I think it was in the 100-meter dash while he was in high school. I'll have to fact check right? myself, but... Yeah. Yeah, not the biggest frame, but speedster Raphael Denson is. And pretty sure <laughs> that's where McKenzie gets it from. Yep. Wark the batter. Gets the base hit, and now it's Schneidmiller. And is the second base hit for Oklahoma State. And it goes in as a single for Michaela Wark. Schneidmiller had a base hit in the third inning, the first hit for 
OSU, the other hit for the Cowgirls. And it's one and one now. And the one thing Mara Moore has stayed away from in this game, she's walked one, and uh, that's a good sign for her and for the Golden Hurricane because against a power-laden OSU team, you can't afford the freebies. No, that's exactly what Chrissy Strimple told us. We don't want to walk them. Can't give them the free ones. Two and one now. Bloodworth, the veteran, is on deck. Tulsa with a one nothing lead with that run in the home half of the fourth inning. RBI double by Clara Skaggs. And some of the Tulsa fans wanted that one, but it goes to three balls and one strike now. This is going to be an important at bat for more and more. There was some activity in the Tulsa bullpen that we saw in between innings. And that's ball four. So that's the second walk. And a runner at second, work. And uh, Schneid Miller at first with a free pass. She's been aboard both times. And now the batter is Megan Bloodworth. Bloodworth came into the game a 180 average and popped out to the third baseman in the third inning. And again, you're getting to the bottom of this cowgirl order. And if you're Mara Moore, you want to knuckle down and not face the top. With the, with the traffic on the bases, that's exactly right, Bruce. No balls, one strike to Bloodworth. Playing at shortstop for OSU this year and has done a fine job moving over. A little bit high. Tulsa wanted that high strike, and, and, and honestly, Rick Boyer has given the high strike a few times, not every time. Yeah, you can tell by the look on Mora's face when she feels like she earns a call that she doesn't quite get. Jammed her on that one, and it's one ball and two strikes to Megan Bloodworth. That's what they say in baseball and in softball a shutdown inning after you score after you do something well offensively can your pitcher go out and shut down the opposition well right now Oklahoma State is threatening and Mara Moore going to try to slam the door bouncer to third Skaggs makes the play but runners move up into scoring position work to third Schneid Miller to second two down and Macy Graff the scheduled hitter a good decision there by Clara Skagg. She didn't hesitate. She didn't have time to hesitate. By the time she fielded that, only a chance to get one out and made the right decision. So now the lead runner is at second in Schneidmiller. Graf the batter popped out to short her first time up. Some more hoots of derision from the Tulsa fans. They <laughs> thought that one was a strike, and everybody's an umpire, huh? Uh-huh, from the stands. They actually have a great view out there. <laughs> Here's the 1-0 pitch to Graf, and that one is a strike, and it's one ball and one strike. It's a good mixture of Tulsa fans and Oklahoma State fans. With this sellout crowd, second straight year, it's been a sellout for this game, and you can see why. That one catches the outside edge. One ball, two strikes. On deck is the dangerous Talon Edwards for Oklahoma State. OSU so far only has left one on base. A late swing and she spoils. And the count still at one ball and two strikes. Well, they've had two base hits and they've had four base runners total with a pair of walks by Mara Moore. important with Mora ahead in this count to really be selective about what she throws. And she gets her with an outside corner fastball. And that's it for Oklahoma State in the fifth inning. And it is, we've played just two weekends so far. And Tulsa on top.
Yeah, it didn't hurt to get off to a series sweep over Memphis. That was an impressive showing by Tulsa. And then to follow that up with dropping the first game against USF and then climbing back in it to win the series, a really good start to conference play for, for TU. Wood the batter. One ball, no strikes. And I think part of it has to do with that this is an experienced group. They've seen losing a game one and mm -hmm. did a nice job of coming back and winning the next two. No panic. Uh, losing a game at home like that. Mm -hmm. And certainly, as you mentioned, a road sweep in the league is gold. Oh, yeah. Two balls, no strikes to Celeste Wood. Especially when one of those days on the road is a doubleheader. Uh-huh. You know, they swept Memphis in a doubleheader. The, the first Friday of the league season was washed away in Memphis. And you got to play a doubleheader on Saturday, a single game on Sunday, and Tulsa won them all. Two balls, one strike to Celeste Wood, who flied to left field her first time up. Tulsa got a couple of extra base hits. Last half inning, or last inning in the fourth. They've scored the run, and there's a check swing, but she went too far. Celeste Wood not happy with herself. She knew that was a ball and maybe caught it just a little bit late. And when she's swinging the stick, man, it is a pretty swing. Stays alive in that one. That wasn't a pretty swing. That was a rusty <laughs> gate swing. But when she is on, it is a sweet stroke. That was a get a fraction of this ball swing. Yep. Two, two. That one, nice snag by Acock. Otherwise, that might have gotten up the middle for a base hit. Wood is retired. One down in the fifth inning. Macy Cole, the batter. A low toss there to first base. And Bruce, what do they say? They said the hardest throw for a pitcher is feeling the ball and yeah. <laughs> throwing yeah. it to first. You know, they can throw it 70 miles an hour, but getting it over to their friend at first, harder than one might care to admit for pitchers. It can be a bit psychological. Cole mm -hmm. the batter, and it's 1-0. and oh. Emily Watson was a great pitcher for the University of Tulsa. She could not throw the ball to first base. And <laughs> even, even trying it underhand, she had a, a little bit of an issue. But she was a terrific pitcher for Tulsa. In fact, when there were bunts, she would back out of the circle and let the fielders <laughs> <laughs> take over and get the out. <laughs> And that's in for a strike. Been a defensive change for Oklahoma State. We'll get to that in a moment. That's an off-speed pitch, and now it's two and two. David goes to center field, checks into the game at center field for OSU. Tim moves from center field to right. I was written, given a note, David, I think it's Davis. I think it's Sailor Davis is, I might have misread it, but it's Sailor Davis in center. That one bloop toward right center field, but the second baseman getting back there, and Rosie Davis makes the play two down. I believe it's Scotland David out there in okay. center. Number three, the senior outfielder. Oh, there you go, yeah. I was looking for a David, and I didn't see one, <laughs> but there's one there, obviously. Yeah. They have two Davises on the roster, a David. It's kind of like Tulsa basketball. They got Williams, Yeah. Wilson. Here's Vickery. Yeah, Scotland David in center field. Brings a little more of a veteran presence to this mm -hmm. very young core out there right now. One and one count to Emma Vickery. Emma Vickery just playing in her 10th game of the season. Local player from Jinx came over to Tulsa with her high school teammate. 
Faith Russell, who mm -hmm. isn't playing today, but with all these local players, it's just cool to see them really progress and grow throughout their collegiate time. Two one pitches in there for a strike. Two balls, two strikes now to Emma Vickery. And a nice breaking ball, and, he, and she's able to get Vickery, and Vickery strikes out, and that is the second strikeout for Kyra Aycock. And we had. It'll be interesting to see if, you know, fatigue starts to set in for her, or if she's able to shut it down here again in the sixth. Top third of the order for OSU. And it's one ball, no strikes. Talon Edwards, Claire Tim, and Carly Godwin. One ball, no strikes to Edwards, who is 0 for 2, is lined to center and flied to center. And now it's 2 and 0. And one thing that Kenny Gajewski has really put in a lot of effort to is a program called The Program. It's something that the Cowgirls do in the offseason, and it's really quite interesting. That pitch is in there for a strike, but it's, it's kind of like a retreat, you know, for the entire team. <laughs> yeah, and not like a spa retreat, more like a highly physical, highly mental, a little bit emotional um, program, or I should say, group retreat where the team is you know required to go through a number of different activities that really encourage teamwork and team building in a way that doesn't allow the coach to be there to bail them out right he had to learn that they can get there on their own it's the heart he said hardest couple days he's had as a coach and it's something he started for the first time last season they did it again this past off season and it's something that he said allows him to learn a lot about his players in August, things that he wants to know about, guys who are going to show up, and then, of course, the guys who aren't. And he'd rather learn that type of stuff in August than in April when they're trying to make a postseason run. Absolutely. And it's a lot of, hey, young ladies, figure it out yourself. Mm -hmm. And, obviously, Mara Moore has figured it out. Strikes out Talon Edwards, one down in the sixth inning. And that and one was the high hard one. Ultra impressive after getting behind 0-2 in the count to your leadoff batter. To be able to come back and strike her out, especially on a swinging strikeout, that shows you what Moore's got. Claire Tim, the batter now. And I'll probably mischaracterize this, but that pitch is kind of a power screwball. I mean, normally a screwball, if you think about it in baseball terms, is one that dips and it moves a whole lot and mm -hmm. drip, drop, you know, a lot of times drops and is kind of an off-speed pitch. But this is a power screwball, and it goes away from those left-handed hitters. Not that time, though, as Tim laces a base hit to left field. One out and one on for Oklahoma State here in the sixth Except inning, and Tulsa third. clinging to the oh, one-nothing lead. Well, Claire Tim leads the team in hits for a reason, is really good at being able to make contact in really a lot of different capacities. Most, completer, most complete hitter, according to their head coach, from the fall time onward. And you see her giving the Cowgirls some life here late. Godwin the batter. And swings through that one. It was a good job. She was late on that. And Mora was able to speed it by her. Bounce back to the pitcher, Godwin, in the first inning, and then popped out to the second baseman in the fourth. Each team with three base hits now. And now a quick 0-2 count for Mara Moore. Now, finishing up our thoughts on the program, they, they go through a lot of tests in this program that mm -hmm. Kenny Gajewski takes them to. Last year, they had a situation where all the girls were in the pool and or in water, and mm -hmm. one of them didn't know how to swing, yeah, they uh, had swim. To <laughs> so they had to figure out how to save the one girl, which they did, and they were never in danger. There's a strikeout, two down here in the sixth inning. And just to finish today, or this year, I should say, for Oklahoma State, they got in the wrestling room and started fighting. They all got padded, padded up and had a chance to kind of battle against uh, some of the instructors. Yeah, you think about the not only physical challenge that that is whether you're treading water for 10 minutes whether you're battling you know grown men 
you, but there's also the mental aspect of that, right? Mm -hmm. That you're learning how to overcome these obstacles and challenges in ways that you might previously not have, and you do it in a team setting. And I think that's what Kenny Gajewski has found so valuable in doing this with his teams. Here's Wong, the batter, with two outs and a runner at first. She has home run power, though. Has seven home runs on the year. Two balls, no strikes. Hitters count here for Wong, who is 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs. Bounce foul. And it's now two balls and one strike. Bruce, you mentioned her home run power. I mean, this game is not over till it's over. In fact, OSC was outscored its opponents 18 to three from the seventh inning on. Now, obviously that includes extra inning games, but like I said, they can score late. And those numbers just prove you, prove you how. Fouled away to the right side and the count remains, or count goes to two and two. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs, and a runner aboard. Big pitch coming here. Popped up and playable for Jones. Abby makes the catch, and again, the sixth inning. As Kyra Acock will try to keep it at 1-0. Top third of the order for Tulsa, Mackenzie Denson, Haley Morgan, and Imani Edwards. That one right down the third base line, but foul. Denson is 0 for 2, grounded out to third, grounded out to shortstop. Tapped foul. No balls, two strikes. Denson, really good two-strike hitter through her career for Tulsa. And She's that one foul. One of the reasons that this Tulsa team has such a high batting average. She's been really terrific this season as a senior for TU. And you you walked us through the top of the top third of the batting order. You have three seniors coming up to the plate. That one's on the outside edge. Strike three to Mackenzie Denson. Third strikeout for Kyra Acock. And that one get another look at it and it might have been a tad outside, but Denson course running up on the ball it's awfully hard to get your bat on that thing uh, that far outside yeah and Kyra's got such good movement mm -hmm. on her pitches too that it can be deceiving as it looks like it's crossing the plate wider than it maybe is once it's in the catcher's mitt Haley Morgan is 0 for 2 fly to left and grounded to third Took a little off of that one, and it's one and one to Haley Morgan. That one hit hard, and that's a base hit, and that one rolls into the gap. It's extra bases for Morgan, and she has a one-out double. We're getting another look at that swing from Haley Morgan. She did a really good job adjusting to make contact and meet that ball where it was at. Look at how low she has to swing to get that to get that contact. It almost kind of looked like a golf swing, but yeah. looked like Freddie Freeman out there a little <laughs> with how low she she hit it. But a really good job by her extra base hit. Yeah, she dropped the barrel Once on again. it, no question about it. Yeah. Now here is the pitching coach for Oklahoma State. I was going to mention her. Uh, Carrie Eberly comes out, the former pitcher, and uh, she will talk with Kyra Acock here. And I was going to mention that one of the commonalities is longtime head coach John Barfeld 
Mm -hmm. Left Tulsa and became the hitting coach, uh, the uh, pitching coach, I should say, for Kenny Gajewski and really did a nice job for Coach Gajewski through the years. And so the common thread, if you will, really nice job by Barfelt. But it's quite obvious you look at the numbers that Kerry Eberle's come in and, and just kept it rolling here on that pitching staff. Yeah, I think she's helped all of these pitchers tremendously. The numbers, though, for... Gags drove her home, and that's the only marker on the board in this game. But Edwards, at first, it looked like they might score that a triple. They ended up scoring it a double and an error to Claire Tim to allow her to go to third, and Skaggs got her home with the double, so the run is earned. Oh, can't stop the swing there. I believe she went around, and she did. It's just one ball and two strikes with a runner in scoring position. So two doubles for the Hurricane. Continues their merry parade of <laughs> getting the extra base hits, most of them doubles. One and two count. And she golfs that one into right field. Rounding third, Morgan now a late stop sign. And probably a good idea for head coach Chrissy Strimple. She was waving her arms crazily <laughs> for a while, but then she realized that the right fielder was able to get to it and Tim got to it and Got it in in a hurry. Yeah, she did. She was running forward with momentum when she fielded that, so that carried her forward and was looked like she was certainly going to be able to get it in fast enough to make the out at home. So, Well, and for Haley Morgan, she had to make sure that line drive went through before she could head off because there's one out. And now time is called. Tulsa has runners at first and third now here in the sixth inning. And a change is going to be made. By the way, that, that error we just mentioned by uh, Claire Tim way back in the fourth inning, that is the first error for either of these two outfields in this ball game. And it looks like... Mary at that point. So she steps to the plate. one nothing score, Tulsa. The infield is in for the Cowgirls. A little bit more just on that key right you can tell we talked about what coach Eberly has done with this pitching staff you can see the impact she's making specifically with ivy rosenberry she had 20 k's all of last season like you just saw in that graphic right there she's up yeah. to 43 hmm. through march of this season right. so great output from rosenberry after working with coach Eberly. she's really turned the corner under her that one misses a throw to third and a steal. Tulsa steals second. Amani Edwards off and moving. And for Amani, that'll be uh, her 12th steal of the year. She's only been caught a couple of times. So now Tulsa, two runners in scoring position for Clara Skaggs. And now two balls and two strikes. Ivy Rosenberry, about 68 to 70, but it's a hard drop ball. And Boy, is that a tough one to pick up if you haven't faced her before. Mm -hmm. She's working on that changeup. It's getting better, but right now her best is the drop ball. And there it was right there, and Clara Skaggs able to spoil it and foul it away. Get another softball in for Ivy Rosenberry. Five and two last year, 2.65 earned run average from Winchester, Virginia. Two, two. Oh, and she went after that hard drop ball and that's a huge strikeout for Oklahoma State as Skagg strikes out and now Abby Jones the batter. Yeah, that's the fifth strikeout of the day by this Oklahoma State pitching staff. They have tallied at least five strikeouts in nine of their last 13 games, so make it 10 of their last 14 after today. So here's Abby Jones. The infield deepens up for Oklahoma State. And it's so hard to, to take that pitch because it comes in at the knees, a hard strike at the knees, and then drops down. And with two outs, this is a really important at-bat for Jones. 
This is exactly what Christy Strimple has been talking about with making sure they take advantage of the opportunities they get. You talked about some of those games earlier this season where they were playing, you know, top 25 opponents or they were playing power five schools and they weren't able to capitalize on those opportunities. You don't want to leave two stranded on second and third when you have just a narrow lead at this point in the game. Exactly. And Abby Jones got one a little bit up and boy, she went after it, but couldn't get all of it. Now it's two and one. First base is open, but I'm, assure, I'm sure they will attack Abby Jones here and not want to face the power of Kaylin Bearpaw. Well-pitched game between these two teams. Now the count goes to two balls and two strikes to Jones. Got that split grip, a split grip slapper, but yet has power with three home runs this year for Tulsa. Yeah, it's been good to see Jones just get back to the form that we were used to seeing earlier in her career. Mm -hmm. I know last year was a struggle for her, and it's just good to see her putting up the numbers that we know she's capable of putting up. And again, like experience just can't be understated. She's a senior, she's playing against a great team, but she knows what to do, especially in situations like this. There's obviously a lot on the line. She's got a two and two count with two outs. Fouls that one away, and again, a difficult pitch to try to handle, but she got her glove on it, or got her bat <laughs> on it, I should say. Clutch moment here, one nothing Tulsa threatening for more in the home half of the sixth. That one right through the legs of the third baseman, scoring is Morgan Edwards scores, Tulsa three nothing. Yeah, that's gotta be a hard one for Talon Edwards to stomach at third. That one just right through the glove. And hit pretty hard. And of course they're playing a little bit in so interesting to see if they score that a base hit. Uh, there are a lot of times anything that goes through the wickets is, is an error, but we'll see. At any rate, Tulsa probably doesn't care. They've scored twice here, now with a three nothing lead against number six. And for Imani Edwards to make it all the way to home from second just shows how speedy she is as mm -hmm. well. I mean, Haley Morgan at that point, you know she's making it, but Edwards so quick around the bases that Gives a little bit of a cushion here for Tulsa. Talon Edwards committing her just her fifth error of the season. And it's a big one because two come in to score for Tulsa. And it's 3 0. And Oklahoma State down to their last three outs in the top of the seventh. When you think about pivotal or game changing plays, if Tulsa goes on to win this one, that could be that could be something that leads to this win ultimately. So the Golden Hurricane got one in the fourth, now two more in the sixth. Both of those will be unearned and they'll be charged to Kyra Aycock. That ball hit pretty well to center, but drifting back and making the catch is David, and that is it for Tulsa. But Davis, Michaela Wark, and Audrey Schneidmiller. So far, she has allowed three base hits. Mara Moore faces Davis. It's right down the middle, and it's 0-1. Yeah, if Moore is able to finish this off, the last time Tulsa was able to win, just in the series in general, April 16, 2019. Or excuse me, the last time they were able to win was March 20th, 2019. Mm. Since then, it's been all Oklahoma State. So it would be a huge program win if they're able to pull this one out. And it's been a good series through the years. Tulsa's held their own. Oklahoma State leading the all-time series 35 to 22. And an 0-2 count now to Rosie Davis, who is 0-for-1, a walk and a pop out to second. And I would say certainly some strikeouts for Mara Moore were important, but I think more than anything, her movement on her pitches in the zone have given Oklahoma State some trouble. Well, and even these 
counts that have run full. And that's right at the second baseman on two hops, and Jones takes care of business. One down here in the seventh inning. Finishing that thought, even on these counts that have run full, and she's given up some, some balls, there are a ton of, of pitches being thrown that are fouled back that are still in and around the zone that the hitters are just trying to make contact with to stay alive in. So she's, you know, you think about her pitch count in total, a number of them have been pitches in the zone, despite the, the few balls. Work takes a ball a little bit high. One ball, no strikes. Michaela Work with a, ground a grounder back to the mound and also has singled in this game. She reached third base. She's the only cowgirl so far reaching third in this game. And now a 2-0 count. The one thing that Mara Moore, you don't want to say she's relaxed in this situation, but with a 3-0 lead rather than 1-0, she can pound the strike zone. She doesn't have to nibble. 100%. We talk about that play that was kind of game altering. I mean, for more reasons than one. But yeah, to have a three-run cushion as a pitcher, got to be a lot more comforting than a one-run one. 2-0 one. -oh pitch right down the middle. She really needed that called for a strike. So you don't want to get behind 3-0 and oh as a pitcher. 2-1 count. Popped up, shallow center, coming on and unable to make the play is Haley Morgan on a fly ball to center. And you had both players, Edwards and Morgan, going hard for it. Yeah, another look at that. It's really. Ellen, hard. that's one that's that, that's tough, and you hope that everybody's okay, and I think they are. But there's a little bit of a little bit of a collision there, and I think Haley Morgan probably catches it about well knee high, if not run into by Edwards. But you can't blame Edwards; she's got to go out and get it. Well, you think about the location of that ball, the sun, the combination of all those things. I'm sure both of them were calling each other off. I got it, I got it. And at that point, you don't want to. I mean, I'm sure they practice that a ton, right? Like communicating in instances just like that, but you know. So it's a break and, and for OSU and certainly a base hit for Wark. You can't give an error on that, obviously. And now you have one out and one on for Schneidmiller. And Oklahoma State with a base runner. Schneid Miller and oh, go ahead. Taylor Anderson, pitch running. And now pinch hitting number 21. So we have a pinch runner, Hayden Sokolowski. So Sokolowski as a pinch hitter. And then we have the pinch runner as well. You look at Sokolowski's average on the season, 364 compared to what, who would have been hitting in this instance, Schneidmiller, who's just hitting 160 on the season. And you understand why, you know, she might get in for her 19th game of the season. Anderson is the pinch runner at first. And the count goes to 2-0. and oh. One out and one on for Oklahoma State. See the hefty batting average for Sokolowski. And that's right in there. Two balls and one strike. The base hit is the fourth for Oklahoma State in the game. Sokolowski has a little bit of pop with six home runs, 15 driven in, right? I think just one homer, but yeah, six driven in. I used to be able to read a stat sheet, <laughs> but from this angle, it looked like six and 15, but you're right, it's one and six. But she still could get it out of the ballpark, and that's a good, good high, hard one by Moore. Yeah, you look at her slugging percentage, 682. She certainly can. Popped up, shallow left, going back is Edwards, and Edwards makes the catch this time. 
And she was calling Denson off. Well, after what we saw in the previous play, learned her lesson. It was a hard catch to make positioning-wise. She she did a good job of staying with it, but yeah, not not easy what Amani Edwards was just able to do. And now the Cowgirls down to their last out. It's gonna be Tia Warsup. Gonna pinch hit here for Bloodworth. Bloodworth went 0 for 2. Now batting number nine, Tia Warsup. Warsup, a freshman, five foot four. And no runs. I mean, four Ks. She just needs to stay true to what she's been doing at Scotner to this point. Squared as if to bunt. And Warsup takes a ball, one ball, no strikes. Slashes in that one, on that one, and fouls it away. Now, Warsip has played in 23 games. She has started five, and she does have an average over 300. No extra base hits and one RBI, and her job is just to get on base any way she can for the Cowgirls. That's a strike. And Oklahoma State down to their final strike. These two teams will play again on April 10th. A Wednesday in the Stillwater. And here's the delivery outside for a ball. Two balls, two strikes to Warsip. Stays alive. So still two and two. Mm -hmm. Another two, two. Pop foul again, she stays alive. Another 2-2 two -two pitch. And now it's 3-2. and two. Some of the fans thought that was a strike, but it was clearly a ball. Tulsa, go ahead. Close, a little bit outside as well. So now it's 3-2. and two. Ball four. Oklahoma State still alive, and now the tying run will come to the plate. Scheduled hitter is Macy Graff. And this will be Lexi McDonald who will come in. And she will pinch hit. in there for a strike. McDonald, a home run on the year, one home run, and has four RBIs. And they would be the biggest three RBIs of her career if she could hit her second home run of the year. A young career for Lexi. She's a sophomore. Outside for a ball, and again, the Tulsa fans are hooting and hollering. They, they want to see Mara Moore finish things off here. And again, this is the number nine position in the order for OSU and Talon Edwards on deck, hoping to have a chance at the top of the order. <laughs> 
Tomorrow, Tulsa will play host to Central Arkansas, 5 p.m. start. And Oklahoma State heads to Provo, Utah, and will play at BYU starting on Friday. Again, one strike away. Bounce to the right side, and the hop played by Abby Jones, and she takes care of business, and Tulsa takes care of business. The University of Tulsa has upset number six, Oklahoma State. I'm about to drop some knowledge real quick Talking about a profession that deserves more respect slick Nurses on the front line saving lives every day From the ER to the OR they don't play They the heartbeat of the healthcare scene Always there keeping patients clean From newborns to the elderly they care for all Even when the workload feels like a brick wall Nurses in the house Making rounds, stethoscope in hand, they hold it down They're the heroes and scrubs, no doubt saving lives That's what they're about From administering meds to comforting fears They're the ones wiping away all the tears They'll advocate for you, be your voice in the crowd In a chaotic world, they're the calm, never loud Working long shifts, barely taking breaks Their dedication and passion never fakes through the highs and lows, they persevere Their compassion shines bright, crystal clear Nurses in the house, making rounds Stethoscope in hand, they hold it down They're the heroes and scrubs, no doubt saving lives That's what they're out there Respect to the nurses, holding it down In a world where chaos often abounds They're the backbone of healthcare, can't you see? Without them, where would we be? Nurses in the house Making rounds, stethoscope in hand, they hold it down They're the heroes in scrubs, no doubt saving lives That's what they're about So next time you see a nurse, give them props For all they do, non-stop They're the unsung heroes of our time the rhythm of life, they're the perfect rhyme.